Red Bull's history started in the 70s in Thailand with this, Krating Daeng. In 1982, Dietrich Mateschitz found that it cured jet lag, and in 1984, he partnered with Chaleo Uvidia to create Red Bull Gesellschaft mit Beschranter Haftung. Each invested $500,000 and owned 49% of the company. The other 2% was owned by Chaleo's son. Dietrich worked on adapting the flavor and marketing for the European market, and in 1987, Red Bull was born. There's a lot of controversy around the ingredients. Caffeine, taurine, glucuronolactone, sucrose, glucose are just some of them. Health Canada found that a healthy adult should not consume more than 400 milligrams of caffeine per day. Red Bull has 80 milligrams per 250 milliliter can, which is about the same as a cup of coffee. The European Food Safety Authority found taurine and glucuronolactone levels to be safe. Sugar levels are also similar to that of fruit juice, the deadly, deadly fruit juice. But there is a sugar-free version that uses artificial sweeteners instead. There is one death that could have been caused by Red Bull. A 21-year-old suffered from postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, and I did that in one try. If I knew what that meant, I would tell you. Red Bull could have been a factor, but she had an abnormally large heart, and she was taking epilepsy medications at the time. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that it's not recommended to take Red Bull with over-the-counter meds or while you are dehydrated. As of 2008, Chaleo and Dietrich were worth $4 billion. Speaking of billions, 4.6 billion cans were sold in 2011, which is about 146 cans per second. There are two types of cans in the world, tall silver and short gold. Red Bull sells in 164 countries, and the Chinese version is not carbonated. Interestingly enough, this was the YouTube ad while I was researching the topic. Red Bull advertises through special events, extreme sports branding, team ownership, and so on and so forth and on and on, etc, etc, Wingardium Leviosa.